You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. <coughs> Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing a recap of the 25th anniversary special of Raw. Yeah. Um, a lot going on here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, depending on what, uh, what arena you were Yeah. At, that was apparently the big thing, is the people at the Manhattan Center were not happy. Well, you know, they sat and watched the TV screen all night. And apparently during the... It, they basically got a 205 live house show because apparently they got two cruiserweight matches plus the uh bray and matt hardy match and the other stuff that happened uh-huh well because the undertaker came out there and mm-hmm. dx came out there yeah so that was it though right yep that was pretty much it um it, it was <laughs> yeah it was I, a mess yeah especially they, for the price that people paid for these yeah, tickets and, and the best part was that like i think it was jr who was oh, talking during the pre-show about how much they spent on yeah. the tickets people spent upwards of 800 dollars here yeah despite the fact that they knew full well that it wasn't going to be worth the price of admission <sighs> apparently um, so <laughs> they had to know that this was a bad idea having it in two spots yeah i mean i get it why they did it because oh. of the historical significance of the first Raw. And, and the then... fact that the Manhattan Center can't hold a full-size right. Raw uh-huh. anymore. So that part makes sense. But they should have had it at the Garden. Yeah, something. Why not have it at the or Garden? Or they could have just changed the Barclays Center to the old set. That would also make sense. But but because it's... Madison Square Garden holds more significance to the, to the WWE than the Manhattan Center mm-hmm. does anyway. Yeah. But they don't rent it out as often. I think just well, house I th- shows. You, they really. I was do gonna now. say I don't think they do live shows there anymore. No, you like raws and papers. You're talking about. Yeah, I, it's been a while. Yeah, I'm almost positive it's been years since they've actually done a raw from Madison. I believe Park. it. No, no, absolutely. Um, so it really, I don't understand why, but mm-hmm. it would make it a lot more sense. Like I get it, I get it. That right. it's the first raw, but like I said, it's still having it in two different spots was just. Just not, not not needed unnecessary no. no um so also you know the show as a whole was very nostalgia heavy and beyond you know what i i kind of came out thinking or feeling i should say um i mean besides the fact that all the guys trying to recapture their youth with the nostalgia acts uh-huh. are all old men now yes, so they are it it, it, it it kind of lost you know it's that was it well you mean you noticed that they were old that kind of thing yeah i mean it was just like okay i I think i'm past this point i i enjoy the current product i like the current wrestlers it's it's a better product yeah you really don't need these old guys coming in yes that's good thing though absolutely no (laughs) and and, and that's that's how i felt after the show and that's why i was like okay i think i finally got been able to move on from the attitude era being the great you know, mm-hmm. I mean, not to take anything away from it because it was great. Yeah. But it, that, times have changed. Exactly. It's not, you don't need And it was them. especially glaring that times have changed oh. through the show. Well, yeah. Because it was funny. Um, I think it was, I know, I'm pretty sure JR said it. Mm-hmm. Said something about. Oh, when Lola talked about puppies? No, uh, not that. <laughs> no, with um, where he said that. Um, because it was uh, some that I guess they said at the beginning when they started Raw that it was like live and uncensored or mm-hmm. something like that. Oh, okay. And they said it again. Mm-hmm. Like obviously that's not true. It's just it's just funny yeah. that something that like they used to feel the need of saying to say and, yeah. Um, but it's you know, it was it was it was nice seeing some things, but other things yeah. just like you know. I, the opening segment was fantastic. Oh, it was very good. It Let's very take exciting. us there. So the show opens with uh, Shane and Stephanie in the ring. Um, they like to thank everybody for 25 years of Raw, blah, Absolutely. blah, blah. Um, and then they say there's one man in particular that needs to be thanked. And then they call out Mr. Uh, Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. So vince comes out <laughs> before you go any further when he came out i was like oh man he looks great and then he gets to the ring and the spotlights on him I was like oof well you know he is old it, yeah so um so vince comes out and they present him with a plaque 
that says thank you for 25 years or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. and then vince is not pleased well it was funny because they said they started a gofundme Uh, to to get this plaque and so you know the fans put in money uh, yeah yeah uh, and so vince (laughs) is like this is all i get all my hard work i just get a plaque (laughs) just a complete 180 to heal the audience fantastic so he because i think they were chanting thank you vince Mm mm-hmm um, and Vince was starting to get angry at the chant, and then Stephanie was like, "No, no, Dad, that's uh, that's a thank you chant." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he uh, he goes on. He's like, "The GoFundMe, blah blah blah." He's like running down to people like, "This, this is all you can cheap. get me." Um, so obviously he's setting up heel Vince McMahon mm-hmm. right there, um, and then he's like, "I did this all myself. There was absolutely no one else that helped me do it. It was mm-hmm. all me." And then the glass breaks. Or yep, glass and you knew what was coming yep. next. Austin comes And that down. was completely fine. Oh, absolutely. This was this was the... Actually, this and um, the APA stuff mm-hmm. are probably the most appropriate to have right, like, absolutely. at the show. Because mm-hmm. everything else seemed more forced. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, so, Like, we have these people here. We have to put them yep. out there. There's a, there's actually two... Two segments. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... <laughs> Austin comes out. It's Shane. I think Stephanie left the ring. Yeah. Uh, so it's just Shane and Vince. Austin's staring down Vince. He doesn't say a word. <laughs> Vince goes, you know, times have changed. changed. I got I'm, this heart condition. I'm an <laughs> old man. I got this murmur that I can't get under control. I'm a, I'm a member of AARP. Yeah. I live in a retirement home now or community. Shane, Shane's looking at him like really confused. He's like, what are you going on about, old man? None so, of these things are true. So, uh, and then Vince goes, was like, well, you see, Shane here, he's in great health. Yeah. He's in his prime. <laughs> So at that point in time, uh, Austin hits Shane with the stunner, mm-hmm. and then um, Vince and uh, Austin... Well, then he gets the beers in, right? No, uh, Vin- Vince and Austin hug it out. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Vince goes to leave. Austin's music stops. Vince kind of just sits there, turns around, and then that's when Austin gets the gives him the middle finger and mm-hmm. hits him with the stunner. Yep. And then that's when the beers start coming out. Yeah, I thought he had the beer in his hand when he stunned him. No, it was the second time. No, no, Oh, no, that was the first yeah, time. Yeah, okay, Vince yeah. did have a beer yes. in his hand. Yeah, they yeah. cracked the beer together. Mm-hmm. And then Austin grabs more beers, and he starts doing his thing. Mm. He ends up handing one to Shane, who's, like, on the ground. Shane gets up, opens it, shares it with him. And then stuns him again. <laughs> yep. Uh, but this time with beer in his mouth to get the, uh, mm-hmm. the splash the effect. Yeah. That was always a good one. From, but yeah, uh, no, no, this this is really what we wanted. Oh, for, this this was the thing right. that needed to happen. Mm-hmm. The, just this. That's This is the only thing that people really wanted to see. And that's mostly because of the fact that you don't see Austin very right. often. Yeah, yeah, and he looks really good, too. Well, he looks he looks like a slightly older version yeah, of himself. Of course. He, Did, he's still in good shape. He's still himself, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Did you see the interview he did with Mike Rowan? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. So you flew me all the way to New York for that? You asked me one question? Nothing yeah. else? Yep. Oh, so good. Great. If you guys didn't check that out, I think it's on WWE's yes. YouTube page. Mm-hmm. You can check it out there. Yeah, it was great. It was like one of those raw Fallout videos. Yeah. There was also one with... Uh, Jericho, Tom, and Mike. Yeah. And then Hippie, <laughs> Tom, Tom Mike, Lady Tom. Mike, Tom. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that like I said, that that was the best opening they could have done. Absolutely. So I will definitely give them Absolutely. props for that. But uh, overall, I think they drove like drew drew like four and a half million viewers. Uh, it, they made a big deal about yeah. it. So and they've been talking about it for, for a while, months yeah, yeah. now. So, but business must go on. So up next, we had an eight women's tag match, which yeah. was uh, it was what Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville. Alicia Fox and Nia Jax mm-hmm. versus Sasha, Bailey, Asuka, and Mickey. Yes, that um, is correct. So basically, the whole point of this match was to display the dominance of Nia Jax and Asuka. Yes, that was the whole thing. Although, it's funny because Sasha Banks is the one who won the match. 
Yeah, but so. she took a beating from Naya. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm not yeah, saying yeah. That. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just funny that they gave the win to right. Sasha but, despite but the fact. But that was fine. It was fine. Pre-Royal Rumble, you obviously mm-hmm. want to showcase your... Well, you also can't really do a whole lot. <clears throat> Story-wise, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is basic. What The only story that they did mm-hmm. or they could have done was what they did. Hmm. Whereas after the match, because yeah. um, Alicia Fox tapped out to this bank statement. That is her thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So Asuka, Bailey, Mickey, Mickey, and Sasha are celebrating in the ring. Mm. And then Asuka decides to turn around and throw the three of them out of the ring. Yep. And this was showing that Asuka is the last woman standing. And that's, yeah. you know, that's the only really story that really needs to be told. Yep, that's it. So it's, it's it good. It's good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, so up next, we go backstage and Kurt Angle's talking to one of the referees. And then... Here's another legend segment where the coach comes in. There was a lot of people. And then what, Harvey Wilfelman comes in, the Brooklyn the, Brawler, yep. Teddy Long, that Brother was, Love. It was funny, though, because Teddy enters the room with his, like, dance. Mm-hmm. So that that is that is a nice little nostalgia yeah. thing. Like, some of the other people just kind of don't feel like they yeah. The Brother Love was good, too. Yeah, because, well, I mean, there was Bruce Pritchard hasn't been around for a while. It's he was true. working with TNA for a while, mm-hmm. Impact, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then the boogeyman comes in, eats some his, worms. Yeah, eats some worms, pulls him out of his mouth, puts him in Coach's hand, yeah. and uh, that was that. But this, that was, was fine. Coach too. Co- yeah, Coach is well, definitely. Well, he no longer works with ESPN, right? I thought he did. I thought uh, he... actually he might have got really. Uh, I don't know about released, but he might have like left yeah. somewhat recently. I thought so. I know within the last couple of years he's worked mm-hmm. there. Um, but he was always good with the WWE. He was a good heel commentator. Yeah. But I think it's more of a person that you appreciate now oh, absolutely. than at the time. No, man, <laughs> it was really, like, oh, I hate he this is, guy. He is one of those guys that everyone just dumped on. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. So um, up next, they do a Undertaker package where they show all, like, Raw clips of him mm-hmm. during the, the years on Raw, which I don't even – I think some of them weren't necessarily actually clips of him on Raw. It's possible. Um, so – and then he comes out. And then he talks about all the people that he's buried. And, and legends he's faced and things like that. Like, he talked about Mick Foley. And, yeah. So this was a very confusing promo mm-hmm. because it kind of was meant, or at least seemingly meant, to clear the air on what's going on with right. him. But when he left, nothing was clear. <laughs> like, is he coming back? Yeah. Is he done? It really... And from what I can... What I've seen of speculation, no one has, no one any, has idea any idea what no. it means. Yeah. Um, but Apparently, so- the Undertaker was dumbfounded at how small the uh, Manhattan Center was. Somebody had, yeah, just had posted about <laughs> it. Was part of the this reason why it was so used to look a lot yeah, bigger yeah. before we started doing WrestleManias at yeah, right. 100,000 yeah. Yeah. venues. Um, actually, before, uh, before we get any further... Mm. During uh, Vince's, or right before Vince came out, Shane and Stephanie were talking about the 25th anniversary, oh. and um, they did a little clip thing mm-hmm. with all like the highlights. Yep, I know where you're going. And surprisingly, and it more of just because they've been doing a lot of floating around the thing, they had CM Punk sitting on the stage during his and pipe, pipe bomb. bomb. <laughs> yeah, and and you know. It's nice that they do that because, you know, Hulk Hogan was completely blacklisted. So at least, you know, they're showing some kind of, or I guess maybe they're trying to show an olive branch because there was a few shots where he was clear on the screen. Mm -hmm. They even showed, and I know that he wasn't the focus of the point, but it was, I think it was the 2010 Royal Rumble, Mm -hmm. 2010, 2011, where it was him and the great Kali in the ring and Beth Phoenix came Uh, out and eliminated. She eliminated Kali. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know that, um he wasn't the focal point but he was very clear on the screen yeah. and i think there was one other point in the night where they showed him just like on the screen it's uh, definitely possible yeah so and i know there was a lot of people who were like kind of jokingly speculating that he would be there right yeah yeah <laughs> so it, it's just funny that like they kind of like showed him like well maybe there's a chance there's a chance he was on the screen yep. you never know it's true so yep. But yeah, I just figured that mm-hmm. was worth uh, pointing out. So after this, we go back to the Barclays Center, mm-hmm. where the APA is backstage playing cards with Heath Slater and Rhino, mm-hmm. and then the Million Dollar Man makes an appearance. Oh, this infectious <laughs> so, laugh. Yes, he throws money on the table. Well, he throws money on the table, and then you hear the laugh, and uh-huh. it's him. 
Um, the APA had their um, their door, which mm-hmm. was just a wood frame door. It's that always said, so good. Yeah. Um, during the pre-show. Oh, that that's when it was. Because yeah. I was thinking, I was like, when did that happen? Yes. But yeah. So during the pre-show, I think it was uh, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. She interviews uh, JBL and and um, Ron Simmons, and asking, uh, "What's it like having the APA back together?" And they're like, "Oh, it's great. It's just like old times." It's like, and then JBL goes like. I can't find the keys to the door. So he's like, you watch the door. We got to go get the keys. And she's like, oh, I guess I'm I'm going to wait here now. And that, it's not like they went back and she was still standing mm-hmm. there, but it's pretty funny. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. But, yep. And then he, we got to one of your awkward, uh, not awkward moments, this but was just weird. a forced moment. Yeah. So then we had the... What was it? The recognition of all the commissioners, general, general managers? General, yes, managers general managers, you're right. Of Raw. Raw yeah. And they only had four of them. Yeah, we got John Laurinaitis, William Regal. No, actually, no. It wasn't general managers of Raw. It, it was, was general just managers. WWE general managers. Huh. Daniel Bryan's oh, yeah, never Bryan's been. Smackdown. Yeah, dog. The, yeah. So it right, was, yeah. like you said, it was... Uh, John, John Laurinaitis, yes. William Regal, Eric Bischoff, and Daniel Bryan. Yeah, so because... They could have brought Austin out because he was a general manager of Raw. They could have brought out uh, Vicky Guerrero because yeah. she was a general manager of Raw. I understand why they put this here just for the transition into the next match, which well, was fantastic. Well, it's true. But are you talking about just like the Daniel Bryan yeah, and yeah, his yeah, thing? Yeah. 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 So the four of them are sitting on, uh, or like at the They're ramp. Standing, yeah, at the ramp. And then the Miz's music hits <laughs> and he comes by and kind of just stares down Daniel Bryan. As he's walking past mm-hmm. with the Miz Taraj, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and then that's the start of the Miz versus Roman Reigns. Yeah, it was a good transition. Title. Yes. And no, it worked and it set up potential or it teased a potential thing. And unfortunately, it didn't happen, but there's still a chance. That would be a WrestleMania. It could match happen on I Sunday. Love. Something could happen on Sunday because they'll both be there. It's true. So, because obviously everything that happened last year with um, The Miz and Daniel Bryan on mm. that Talking Smack segment. Yep. Um, so, uh, Roman comes out, then the match starts. Yep. So, like you said, this is a good match. There are a lot of good things going on here in terms of, like, uh, good storytelling during the match. The Miz was booked strong. More or less, yeah. Yeah. Because, obviously, Roman <clears throat> was dominating over... But, you know, he, he looked like he was he's kind of not in his, like, normal, mm-hmm. like, running away. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was parts here and there. Yeah, but, but he was playing a, more of a, a smart game. Mm-hmm. Um, so, at one point, there was a lot of interference between or with the Miz Taraj. Um, Roman takes, or the two of them are standing next to each other. Yeah. And he hits the both of them with super. a drive by. Oh yeah, that was at right, this yeah. point in time. The Miz was down in the ring. I think mm-hmm. he had just gotten hit with a Superman punch. Right. And then you you see him crawling towards the corner, but the camera stays away from what he's doing. That was um, so good. Yeah. So later on in the match, I I can't remember how. I think what was it? Reigns was going for a spear, and the I, Miz no, dodged I it. thought. What happened was Dallas and Axel got up on the apron, yes. and Reigns hit them both with a Superman punch, uh-huh. and then that's when the Miz pushed Roman from behind. I, th- I thought he was dodging something, but I guess you could be right. Yeah, and then the Miz pushed him behind into the second turnbuckle, mm-hmm. which he had removed the padding yes, from. Yes, that's so Roman, what he was doing yeah, when earlier the camera on. was avoiding him. Mm-hmm. Hits the um, skull-crushing finale, and we have a new IC champion. Yeah. So, but Roman was the placeholder. <laughs> it's true, but we knew that though. I, I, it's not. It's not like it's. It's not a surprise. We knew he wasn't going to hold the title until WrestleMania. This was the perfect time to to, to change the mm-hmm. title. Um, I had texted you earlier mm. that day. So, if Roman drops the title, <laughs> he's winning the Rumble, right? So. It's a chance. It's definitely but, a chance. Granted, we didn't get an official announcement, which yeah. that's what the pre-show will probably be. It'll pr- yeah, just filling out the rumble. Mm-hmm. But that's Everybody so with their with their iPhone going, oh, I'm going to be in the rumble that's, as it shakes back and forth. That's terrible. That's, that's not good. Oh, man. Hey, we made a whole SmackDown episode of it, you basically. You don't want to know who's going to be in it. It's true. What do they have, like 14 people announced? Something like yeah. that. Uh, For the men, I think that's around yeah. where the number is. It might be a little higher now. Mm-hmm. But 
why why have people why know who's going to be in it there's why, no yeah, yeah there's no need yeah why not have it so that like there's one or two people who are in it for a reason right give them a storyline reason to be in that rumble mm-hmm. and then everybody else is a mystery right don't make a big deal about who's going to be in it because that it's that's the best part yeah it's who's coming out next yeah. it's a mystery if, if you know all 30 people who are going to be in the royal rumble yeah. why watch it yeah. Well, you know, it's we it's fun to now. watch, <laughs> but like, what what is what is the point of having something where anybody can enter, or seemingly anybody yeah. can enter? <clears throat> Except it's, last year when uh, Seth and Sammy had to fight for. Uh... <laughs> but but that's fine. But at the same time, if you do something like that, then obviously you need to have it so people know mm-hmm. who's going to be in it. Oh, it's true. But I I would <clears throat> like it at some point maybe that they have it so that they completely don't... mystery. Yeah. Just, you know, it's it's a lot more fun that mm. way. And there are obviously people who you know are going to be in any way. Right, yeah. So it's just making it so that that's how you waste TV time is kind of silly. Yeah, Like no, they've I, been I doing agree. on SmackDown. Yeah. So we go backstage, and the poker game has increased, or the card game, whatever they were playing. There was a, I think a, it was poker they were playing. Anyway. Yeah, they were playing poker. Yep. There was a couple of notable, um, I guess... Participants yeah, in the yeah. game. Jeff Hardy, and we saw MVP. Yes. Which we saw at House of Hardcore a couple months back. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Very we haven't cool. seen him on WWE TV. No, and he's been doing a lot of well, independent stuff. Supposedly, the, he's coming back. Is he? Yes, that's what I had heard. Like an actual contract? Yes, or like a full time wrestler. Awesome. Um, he yeah. was he was cool when we saw oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he was still. He still, he still looked really good, good yeah. yeah. Um, and then the Usos were there as well. Yes, but you know, the Usos always are up for getting in trouble. So. <laughs> <laughs> at least jay is wow uh yeah anyway mm-hmm. but uh but yeah they just continue with their shenanigans playing poker it's he's, true he's slater is losing more and more money mm-hmm. um, which was the whole story behind yes the whole thing. yeah i don't think we mentioned that part no earlier. yeah <laughs> because he goes i got kids yeah and then i, th- well, I think once Dana JBL- Brooke comes in then it's kind of yeah. becomes more and more obvious yeah well, I think Shave Hill says, well, their daddy's poor now or something like that. <laughs> yes. Uh, good stuff. That was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so up next was mm-hmm. an unexpected slash slightly disappointing segment. Yeah, I, I don't get this. Well, I, I understand I s- why they did it, but, like, you had Christian come out here and... There was no point in having Christian come out say if one thing on with them. Yeah. Because, you know, that Christian's great. But you need Edge and Christian. He should be the GM of the Cruiserweight division. I'd be okay with that, but it's not going to happen. No, I know it's not. Um, anyway, I, like I said, Christian on his own, he just doesn't carry the weight mm-hmm. that the two of them together would have. No. Or Edge by himself would have been fine, too. But Edge had some kind of prior engagement. Yeah, I think he was somewhere overseas. I was going to say, it's kind of, he was probably doing like some kind of like show or yeah. acting. Because Beth was... At wherever SmackDown was on Smash Tuesday, Challenge, so. yeah. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. so uh, Jason Jordan. Oh, it's the Peep Show. Yes, Jason Jordan and uh, Seth Rollins are his guests. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I guess uh, Christian just asks about their success and how they're going to deal with uh, mm-hmm. the the bar on on Sunday. Yeah, and Jason Jordan's Mister Positive, and everything that he said basically got booed. Mm-hmm. It was so it was Seth was like, funny. "Whoa." Wrong timing. Come on, guy. Yeah. So <clears throat> the bar cuts him off. They well, he was out. going on about his dad and oh, yeah, things like that. Yeah. He, and he's like, you guys are wrong. My dad doesn't suck. suck. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then the bar come out to interrupt them. Mm-hmm. And then they go, well, Jason Jordan, we have we have bad news for you. You do suck. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Um, Jason Jordan gets a, a little upset. He attacks some, assuming Cesaro or mm. Sheamus, whichever one of them. Um, and then he is holding one of them down. Or oh. I think it was he was holding Cesaro. Yeah, he was standing behind him holding and, him. And Seth was going for a flying knee. Cesaro ducks out of the way. Seth hits uh, Jason Jordan. Mm-hmm. And then that's pretty much how the segment ends. Yeah. Cesaro and Sheamus, I guess, stand tall. I guess so. Oh, yeah. It was just like a unnecessary segment to have the peep show. Yeah, yeah. But I guess again, we have him here. Let's do something. Pretty much. So up next, we have a backstage interview with Charlie interviewing Alexa Bliss. Yes, this was another one of those forced, mm-hmm. not so, really great 
necessary. She was basically asking Alexa if she thinks she's going to be champ by Mania. Mm -hmm. And then... uh, She was offended by it. Yeah, yeah. Just putting it out there. And she's always so good at being offended. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then Charlotte comes over and she says, you know, the only reason that Alexa Bliss is the Raw Women's Champion is because I'm not on Raw. Mm -hmm. And then... uh, that's when our buddy Ric Flair comes up. The, the look on his face when he walked over. <laughs> thats I, I, I wrote creepy Ric walks out because he just had this really, really weird... He comes over and just like does that to like uh, Alexa. Yeah. And he's like, Charlotte will be the champ until Charlotte no longer wants to be the champ, basically. It was pretty bad. Yeah. But so. he was there, she was there, so... Yep. Ric Flair is there for Ric Let's Flair. put him on the show. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, yeah, then go back to the poker game again. We have some new participants, which was Natalia and Titus Worldwide. Why was Natalia there? I don't know. That's a weird one. Just random people they threw. She's been there a while, I guess. She's been, Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. She's been on more Raws than other people. Look, I don't question things. All right. So up next. That's not true, but, you know. We have the most disappointing moment of the night. <laughs> or the most head-scratching moment of the night, I guess. And all right, yeah. so we had the first televised, televised, uh, I guess, well, pr- post woken, yeah, Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt, yes. Um, and yeah, this has been going apparently, they've been fighting on the uh, 205 live house shows, which is really which funny. Only two of them happened over the past weekend, it's, it's still very funny. The two, well, one of them is certainly not 205 <laughs> live, and I'm 205, and the other one, uh. Uh, back when the cruiserweights were, I think it was two twenty five. Yeah, he I had think just that's what it was. snuck underneath mm-hmm. the. Yeah, because there was a whole thing. Because he is a former cruiserweight champion. It's true. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, Bray Wyatt goes over clean in a very, or very short match. Yeah, this happened at the Manhattan Center. Yes. I don't remember if we pointed that out. Yeah, but, but I, I was a little confused. Yeah, they they did nothing. Yeah, went back and forth. Went to commercial, came back, and then. Bray Wyatt reversed. I don't remember what Matt was going for. Maybe a twist of fate. Probably. And into his sister Abigail, and that was that. It was just kind of like, why? Yeah, it was a little disappointing. Why didn't you have a weird ending or something like or that? Or do anything. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe they just really wanted to get Matt on the show. I guess. And Bray. Um, apparently, during Bray's entrance, they were chanting something. I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, it was weird because they cut back and forth between the well, Barclays. Well, they were just showing yeah. the people with the lights at the Barclays Center. <laughs> but the people at the Manhattan Center didn't really seem to care too much about Bray. Meh. Yeah. So, but, you know. Well, it's his whole long walk to the ring in there. Yeah. It's like, what, 50 feet? Yeah, it's true. Um, and then after that, mm-hmm. they go back to the Barclays Center. Yep. Um, and then they bring out the uh, female legends, mm-hmm. which included the Bella Twins. Yep. Which, I don't know, really call them legends, legends. sir so they're a too recent to mm. be too yep like while they were the like the big names in a blah era right so there was the bell twins kelly kelly mm-hmm. which is kind of funny terry runnels yes jacqueline tori wilson mm-hmm. maurice yes and maria canellis right yeah, and Trish Stratus. And Trish, yeah. Yeah, the, the, bi- <laughs> the, the biggest actual, one, yeah. The actual legend yeah. of... But she was the last one to come out, right? No. Oh, no, no. I think... Ter- no, she was. Yeah, she yeah, was. Yeah, Terry yeah. was the second to yeah, last, which right. I found strange. Mm-hmm. Um, a notable person who wasn't uh, there, Lita. Yeah. She took to Twitter and said uh, She was not happy about though, it, from yeah. what I understand. Um, so what do you think the chances <clears throat> are that they pitched a Team Extreme reunion and Matt said no? And that's why she wasn't invited? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. There's always a possibility. Yeah. But I feel like that would have been completely dumb for them to go back on the whole Woken thing and then... Well, not necessarily a Team Extreme, mm-hmm. like, acting, but, like, the three of them, them interacting. There. I gotcha. That kind of thing. I don't know if that's still a sore spot. You never know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just I figured that that that's a possibility. Yeah. Because um, nothing else makes sense. Right. The only so other. I don't know if her, you know, being a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble is. That's that's what I was thinking. Maybe, maybe that's the reason they kept her. Because her. it was all about legends. Right. 
So Let's if see. you have someone who's Especially coming... Especially when they have her versus Trish Stratus as one of the top Raw moments. Yeah. So you would think that right. maybe they have like some plan for her. Maybe she's going to come back at some kind of like actual wrestling capacity instead of being like a one and done with the Rumble thing. Right. You know, that could be something. And to have her do say something on Twitter kind of just builds to the story. Mm-hmm. Going it's like, on. oh, there's she's she's pissed at them. She's not going to be in the Rumble. Yeah. So it's like a like a swerve slash a storyline going on. That's fine. That um, is fine. Yeah. So, so I like this segment. Yeah, this was a good segment. So upstage, uh, upstage, backstage, upstage. Uh, <laughs> Elias is walking up and uh, he's got his guitar in hand, and we see Mr. Chris Jericho mm-hmm. with his Alpha Club shirt on. Yeah, I saw that. That was good. Um, some him and Elias kind of look at each other, and Jericho goes, "What? What's with the scarves or something like that?" Where he makes fun Your of his scarves scar- are so stupid. stupid. Yeah, he's like, "What are you gonna do? Sing a song about me?" He's like, "You know what?" I'm going to sing a song. And he pulls his guitar out. And then what did he say? No, yeah. well, first he says, I'm going to sing a song. Can I borrow your oh, guitar? Oh, can I borrow your guitar? That's right. And Elias okay. goes, no. No. Yes. And, he's and like, then he's it's fine. I have I my, my own. own. And then he just lifts it. Because he had the strap around yeah. him. And then uh, what did he say? What did he say? He st- just strummed and said, uh, I don't want to walk with Elias. He's a stupid idiot or yep. something like that. Yeah. Very, very simplistic. And stuff. you just made the, and you just made the, and you just made the, and then they smile, and he's like, ah, you thought I was going to put you on the list. Well, I am. <laughs> you and your stupid scarf both made the list. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I love Chris Chair. It was it's good. Great. And that's all he needed. It's he true. He just needed to be there for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people were not happy about the the fact that that's all he did, but I... I be, that's all you I need. mean they could have had bypassed the segment had him in the ring but I like the way they went about oh, it oh yeah it was great ring. because Elias does a lot of walking around backstage anyway so it mm-hmm. makes sense it's perfect yeah alright so up, uh, up next we <laughs> you were going to say upstage I did <laughs> I almost did we have Elias in the ring uh, obviously uh, shaking off uh, what Chris Jericho hits mm-hmm. uh, the fans are chanting stupid idiot yep. at him and then uh, he pulls out uh Jimmy Fallon, who was sitting in the audience. Yeah, that's so weird. Um, yeah, and he also sings a song uh, trashing a lot of legends. Mm-hmm. I think he said something about... Uh, he said Jericho. Yeah. He said, Did he say Cena or no? He did say yeah. Cena. And The Rock. And The Rock, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Which, that then, would have been the perfect time for The Rock to come out, too. But It would have I mean, been, but... you know, Wasn't he's, there? He's too important for them. Son of a bitch. So uh, Cena comes out instead. Mm-hmm. Um... Elias tells Cena that he uh, ruined his song, and then Cena goes, "Do something about it." And then, and at uh, this point, Elias gets out of the ring, and Cena's distracted by something in the audience, right? And then you see the beach ball. No, well, what happened? This was when Cena first walked into the oh, ring. Oh, was that? Yeah, I thought Elias he, had gotten out of the ring. No, 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 no. Cena was came in and mm-hmm. was gonna start talking, and then he, and saw, he saw the, the beach, beach ball. ball. Okay, and uh, so yeah. Anyway. So Elias goes to walk away, mm. and then uh, I guess trying to catch Cena off guard, he tries a sneak attack, but Cena's all over him. Mm-hmm. And then he hits him with a five knuckle shuffle, goes for an A. Um, Elias is able to, I guess, duck out of it, um, and then he hits him with a low blow, mm-hmm. and then he hits uh, hits him with the guitar, breaks it over his back, yep. and then hits a drift away. Yeah. So that was weird. Hey. Well, I mean, they're, they're, the two of them are going to go at it during the Rumble. Absolutely. What do you think the chances of them being one and two? Elias being one is definitely a huge, a, a top of the list, just because of the fact that you would have the lights dim and the entrance mm-hmm. and everything like that. Him coming out wouldn't ring. make sense, yeah, you know? he could start in the ring. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and sing a song before yeah. the Rumble starts. That would be a big, uh, a big thing for him, for sure. So, definitely. Um, definitely. So, uh, so yeah. Yep. Up, so. up next, we go back to the poker mm-hmm. game. The New Day have joined. They have. Uh, so, Heath Slater, like, uh, I guess has a, I think it was a full oh, house. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he, like, moves and then cl- cards, cards fall out of his all shirt. over the place. <laughs> so, apparently, he's been cheating. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, so they're all yelling at him. Yeah, and I think, I want to say... The AP said, oh, you're out of money. Go to the ring and get your ass kicked or something like that. Well, or no, go to the they, ring. because Slater wanted to fight somebody. Oh, that's right. Because they, he got caught cheating or yes, something. Yes, yes, yes. 
And then uh, JBL goes, well, we'll we'll settle this in the ring. Mm -hmm. Get your ass out there, something like that. That's it. Um, And then uh, Titus Worldwide follows him. Yeah. I don't, I I wasn't really (laughs) sure exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And then even though the hand had ended and a new one didn't start, all of a sudden, apparently, Ted DiBiase won with Mm -hmm. a royal flush. Yep. And uh, in in the pile of chips, there was a pancake. (laughs) So he picks it up and just throws Throws it. it. Oh man, good stuff. Yeah. And of course, Simmons had to go. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> it was completely unwarranted. But I guess they couldn't figure out another. We way. needed to get it in there. It needed to be said. Yeah, it's true. But that one's yeah. fair because it's always funny when yep. it does that. Uh, then we see Mark Henry walking around backstage. This was weird. Yeah, it was. And then uh, he walks up, and you see the Godfather there, and he was with a la- uh, he had a lady with him, yes. and then. Um, I forget what exactly he had said to Mark Henry. He, well, I guess he introduced her him yeah. to the the woman that he was there with. Yes, and, and then Mark was that, like, "Oh, or that well, was a different era, or something like that." Well, right? no, the Godfather was like, uh, he used to be known oh, as sexual. Yeah, chocolate. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. And then Mark Henry was like, "Well, I'm a changed man," or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Obviously, you haven't." And then so Mark Henry starts talking to the girl and like feeling her arm like that, and Godfather's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, that's my wife." <laughs> So yeah. it was it was something. Yep. I, I like I, I thought it was funny. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't <clears throat> bad. It was just odd. Yeah. All right. So up next we have Titus Worldwide versus Heat Slater and Rhino. Mm-hmm. So um basically the for some reason the two teams well at, after the match had been going on for a little while, the two teams get a little out of control. Right. Ref throws away the match. <clears throat> <laughs> so the match is over, and then all of a sudden the Dudley Boys music hits. They come down to the ring, and just Heath Slater gets beat up. Yeah, he they threw him in the ring, right? Yep, because it was the it was it was Rhino, uh, Titus, and Apollo mm-hmm. on the outside. They throw Heath Slater into the ring to yep. get fed to the Dudleys. He gets the what's up, and then yep. the three D through the table. Yep, mm-hmm. it, and then after after he goes through the table. Rhino, Titus, and Apollo all go into the ring and celebrate with the Dudley. <laughs> like yeah. I, like I get it that Rhino used to be with them, but mm-hmm. they just beat up his partner. Damn. So it's just pretty funny. You're gonna have things like this, you know that. Oh, it's true. So then we find out that AJ Styles is there, I, and yeah, I didn't like this. Charlie was interviewing him, and then AJ says, "You know what? I brought my own announcer here." Yeah. And then they introduce Mean Gene. Uh, and uh, then AJ starts out by saying, let me tell you something, Mean Gene, right? Yeah. And Mean Gene was like, oh, God. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then AJ just basically says that he's going to beat Cammy Sunday at the Rumble. To be fair, at least lately, whenever he's been around, it seems like Gene's a little too overwhelmed with what's going on yeah. around him. So. I'm just saying in general from what I've seen of him, like his announcing stuff, mm-hmm. even like when he was younger, yeah, it just seems like everything around him is just too much <laughs> yeah. for him. Yeah. Like when the sign fell. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, one thing I just want to note here, and I'll probably mention it again on SmackDown, is whoever's writing AJ Styles' lines needs to uh, be sent packing because well, it's not, it hasn't been good. No, nah, it's it's all boring stuff. It's dumb. Yeah. I, that... His SmackDown is the house that AJ Styles built. Yeah, was okay. Right, but then they for a short period of time. Yeah, and now it's just old. Yeah, but whatever. I guess so. Yep. He's the face that runs the place, so obviously they have to give him the bland lines. I guess so. Like suckering, suck, suffering, (laughs) succotash, whatever they had made Roman say that one time. (laughs) Anyway, so uh, up next we have the. well, it's not even the finale now that I think about it. It was the, the finale at the Manhattan Center yes, for the television part. It was also the highlight, I would say, or oh, the second yeah. highlight of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, so DX comes out, which uh, first it was Triple H and uh, Shawn, Shawn Michaels. Michaels. And I was thinking to myself, I thought there was going to be more. of I The other ones were advertised. Where are they? Well, obviously it was going to be a one Build at a time something. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they come out. They talk about how... Um, 20 years ago, uh, we started uh, DX and mm. how we did whatever we wanted. And then they were talking about how, like, Raw has always been DX, even mm-hmm. though it started fi- or it started like five years after yeah. Raw started. But we can look over that stuff. 
Um, so Shawn Michaels yeah, they, starts. They were talking talk- about some of their favorite moments. That, yeah. yeah. Shawn yeah. Michaels starts talking about the uh, the, big the big sausage, the meat, the big stick. Yeah. Um, and then there was the. What was that the Christmas special where they had? Uh... Oh, what the hell were they wearing? They weren't. Were, wasn't it like the where they had their butts out or something? Yeah, like something that? like that. Um, and then Triple H keeps on telling, so we can't talk about that. Yeah, he was being the uh, corporate censor. Man. Yes, uh, he was. Yeah. So um, after that, mm-hmm. he calls out uh, the outlaws. Yep. And then uh, Raw Dog does his thing. Yeah. And so everything. He didn't say yes in the first one. Said, oh, you didn't know? You better call somebody. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> anyway, so, and then x pot comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, he talks a little bit, and then uh, Razor comes out, and they cut the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as he comes out. Yep. So, uh, they uh, they all in the ring. They do, this, do this a little bit. This is my favorite part because at this point I had been reading on Twitter of all the people that were so angry about at, at being at the Manhattan Center and all uh-huh. this stuff. And then all of a sudden Razor was like, oh, this uh, the show here has been too sweet. And I was just like, I bet these people don't think so. Yeah. So they all. But they were into it. So. Yeah. Well, you know, because it's the only thing that really went <laughs> yes, on. That's true. But yeah, they all too sweet in the ring. Mm-hmm. And then Balor Club comes out. A little I think unsolicited. It, yeah. So they were, three of them come out. Announced um, as the Balor Club. Yeah. Um, they all too sweet together because mm-hmm. you kind of figure that they're coming out to interrupt it. We're going to fight. But nah. they're all they're all good brothers. Um, and then at that point, the Revival comes out, and they're not good brothers. Mm-mm. They're bad brothers. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's the opposite of good brothers, so I can't really fight you on that it's one. It's true. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, while... The, after the Battle Club came out, Billy Gunn went to do the... Uh, yeah, if you ain't down with that, we yeah. got two words for it. Yeah. And I think they, he gets interrupted. Yeah, he did. And then that's when the revival yep. comes out. Um, and that sets up a match Yeah, that apparently was supposed to happen? No, but we will get into that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's so, yeah, the it's club the... versus the revival. Right, and then uh, apparently by Kyoto chance... Went throughout the arena. He was dressed in the old school referee's yep. attire, which was cool. I yeah. like that. Well, and he was the best one to be dressed that way because mm-hmm. he was the only one who was actually around when Raw started. Yeah. So um, this was a very quick match. Oh well, you know it was yeah. what nine uh, ten forty five when it started. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But uh, the club beat the revival with the uh, magic killer. Mm-hmm. So after the match, the uh, revival decided. To, well, I should say Scott Dawson decided to attack Razor Ramon. From behind, and both members of the revival ended up basically eating the finishers of every member of DX. Yes, it and was. then it finished with Finn Balor hitting the coup de gras. Yep. So, what I was starting to say beforehand was apparently this beating was meant for Enzo. Really? Yes. Huh. So that's why you said that it, the match wasn't. Yes. Supposed so to I don't think this match was supposed to happen. But and um, it ended up being the way we expected it to happen. Well, I was going to say, they set this up to happen last week with the Revival calling out all the legends. Right. No, absolutely. Unless maybe they were supposed to come out for a different, different I don't set know. of but legends. But yeah, that's that's the rumor I had read that this was supposed to be set up for Enzo because they had the cruiserweights at the, at the Manhattan Center. I guess I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah. But I figured that there was just going to be no cruiserweights at, on the show at all. That was my I thought. Know. I'm but. just telling you what I read. Yeah, whatever. But yeah. And, All right. Yep. So the main event. Sure, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I hate when they do this because the universal title picture is so bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's really bad. So so uh, Angle uh, comes out with a, uh, I guess, a parade of legends and yeah. the current WWE locker room. Or the Raw locker room, yeah. pretty much. There was pro- no, I think, the Usos were there, too. I was going to say, I think the New Day might Yeah, the New Day too. was there, too. Yes, because the New Day sold the crap out of Braun coming out. Yeah. So, so <laughs> they come out. Angle calls out Braun. Mm-hmm. Then he calls out Kane. Yep. And then he calls out Lesnar. And Heyman comes out and does his little speech. And then Lesnar eventually comes out. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> Braun, I think, knocks out Kane to get to Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Lesnar hits him with a nasty clothesline. Yeah. And then they fight, and they fight. 
And then eventually it ends up with Braun hitting uh, Lesnar with a running power slam through, through the, the, the announce table, yeah. which was at ringside. Table. <laughs> it was at ringside. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm really too noteworthy, but uh, you know. Well, no, it's funny because Michael Cole said, for one night only, right. we're at ringside, mm-hmm. which makes no sense because they should always be at ringside. Hey, whatever. But I, you think you think they did that for nostalgia? Or do you or think they the did that for the spot? Probably the spot. Yeah, probably the spot. They probably had it timed to the set, you know? Yeah. Um, so. th- there is no reason at all that Braun should not walk out with the championship on Sunday. There is not, except for the fact that Vince really wants to see Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. But Braun's a big sweaty man, Doesn't and he matter. loves big sweaty men. He's not men. Brock Lesnar. So dumb. But the good news is there's a very good chance that that match is the last we'll see of him. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. Ah, uh, fair enough. So, you know, if that's... Vince has his day and then... Yeah, if that's the deal, you know, I can live with it. It's compromise. Mm-hmm. And then Roman holds the title for 10 years. So, so- which is, which <laughs> you know, whatever. But as long as Roman doesn't win the Rumble, I have no problem with the main event of... Re- or not... or the universal title match at WrestleMania being Roman and mm-hmm. because I, I like the idea of him winning an elimination chamber match to Rather win the number than, yeah. one. Yeah. That's I fine. like that. Mm-hmm. I can live with that. Yep. So, but like I said, yeah, well, we'll discuss this more in depth in our predictions. Royal Rumble predictions yes. video. So, but yes, that was our raw review. If you liked what you saw here, please like share and subscribe. Bye. Bye.